We have some huge breaking news from the NHL. We have two more completed NHL trades, including the Habs trading defenseman Ben Chirot to the Florida Panthers and Kelly Yarncroke has been traded from the Kraken to the Flames. We'll discuss and analyze these deals coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some more breaking news from the NHL. A few more trades have been completed, including the Montreal Canadiens finally completing a deal for Ben Sherrod, who's been sat out of action as a healthy scratch to make sure he didn't get hurt before this deal could be completed. And I must say, Kent Hughes and uh, Jeff Gordon have done a tremendous job here. They've really gotten themselves quite a return on Sherrod. I know it was reported before that they were hoping to get a first-round pick uh, and there was some concern that they might not be able to get that because they were looking for mostly two 2023 first rounders for anybody they talked to, but they've done really, really well. The return package on Ben Sherratt from the Florida Panthers includes a 2023 first round pick, which is substantial. That draft to me is way deeper than 2022. Uh, they also have a fourth round pick in the upcoming 2022 NHL draft, and they have a prospect that was taken 74th overall in the 2020 NHL draft, Ty Smilanic. Uh So he's an American born player, plays center, plays wing. Uh, so certainly, you know, an interesting college uh, prospect at Quinnipiac. Uh, so obviously, probably somebody that Gorton and Hughes are quite be familiar with. They obviously are, are been scouting that scene quite a bit uh, in the U.S. college hockey scene. A lot of different players that they have in their own system and players that they've been rumored to be interested in acquiring. So to me, that's quite a haul for Ben Sherratt, Uh Whereas a lot of people thought they'd get a first round pick, but they get a first, a fourth, and a decent prospect that was just from uh, one draft ago. So that that's a really good deal. And Montreal also retains 50% of Ben Sherratt's salary. So he makes $3.5 million. So that knocks him down to $1.75 million. So that does not hinder Florida's ability to continue going after a guy like Claude Giroux uh, or any other uh, veteran forward who they've been linked to. There's been rumored that they wanted to add on the, uh, de on the defense and at the forward group. Drew has been their main target. Elliot Friedman said tonight that they appear to be the front runner to land Drew, uh, and they'll still be able to do that. And they still have Owen Tippett as well, who's a big trade chip as well. So to me, I think this works well for Montreal. They get a great return. Out of all the options, though, for Florida to add on the blue line, I think there were some better options out there. I'm not going to lie. I like Ben Sherratt. I do like a lot of what he brings. But there, I think there were some better options out there. But he brings an element that they don't have as much in that back end right now. So, obviously, they're quite pleased with their acquisition. Now, the other trade sees uh, the Kraken trade. Callie Yarncroke, who's on an expiring contract, making $2 million a year. Uh, the former National Predator goes to the Calgary Flames in exchange for multiple picks. Now, I don't have the full details on that trade as I record this as of yet, so check the pinned comment down below. But the return package, based on NHL reporters right now, is a couple of draft picks, probably in the mid-round, I would suspect, for a player of Yarn Croak's caliber, going back to the Kraken. Uh, one little-known fact is I assume that most people don't know, which I didn't realize either, but it was reported by Frank Saravalli during, um, on Twitter here while everything was being updated with the trades, that Yarn Croak's actually cousins with... Uh, their top center, Elias Lindholm. So they'll be reunited and be able to play together, which I'm sure they'll be quite happy about. But Yarn Croak certainly adds another element to the Flames lineup. They got a really solid group of players in the top six. He'll help round out the bottom six, uh, can kill penalties, a uh, good role player. Guy can work up and down your lineup as well. So uh, he's had, you know, up and down season in Seattle after a long stretch of time in a Predators organization. So another good deal there. I believe the Flames are going to have to make a subsequent move to be cap compliant, but because the trade was made into the evening, uh, he's not considered officially on their payroll till tomorrow. So you might see another subsequent move from the uh, Calgary Flames whether it be a demotion, a waiver wire issue, or maybe even another small trade. I don't know what they're going to do, but I do believe they have to move some players around uh, to be fully compliant to add him on the active roster starting tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. But simple, more big trades. Lots of things appear to be heating up. I know there's been also talk that a trade for Mark Giordano is, seems to be getting close. And we could see a lot of these names possibly even move before we get to deadline day on Monday. So let me know your thoughts on these trades down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We will keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of everything around the NHL trade deadline 2022. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.